This circuit has a name. It's called an R2R ladder. And it's sort of a complex version of a series and parallel resistor network. Uh, it's a little beyond what we would put on a final exam because there's a little trickiness to it. You know, it's not straightforward at all. But I think going through the solution does help you think about a series in parallel. Okay, so we're going to go through the solution. The question is, what is the resistance from A to B, here to here? Or if you prefer, what we're really just asking for is if there were a battery, what is the equivalent resistance? If you would rather think of it this way, you could put a battery here and say, what is the battery C? the resistance between A and B. We didn't really talk about instruments, but the idea is what if you put a, a, resist, a resistance meter here? What would you see? All right, so you look at it and you could start to think, okay, I've got current flowing. So here I have R and then it splits. And this initial R is in series with whatever this turns into. Okay, so it's, well, it's in series with these two things in parallel, two R and R, but then that's in parallel which is in the series with that, but then that's in parallel. So it's like a parallel branch kind of splitting on itself. If I had to give you a geometric drawing of it, it would be kind of like something like that. But that's not how we're going to do it. Because the key to this problem is to not start at the front. It's to start at the back and to start to notice that a certain branch of the circuit you can just treat like a resistor that's in series with another branch. Okay, so this is why it wouldn't be on an exam, is you have to come up with the trick that has nothing to do with physics for how to handle it. Okay, so if we're going to start at the back, then what you would do is say, okay, I just want to deal with this branch right here. All right, so this, we'll call this the first branch, call it branch A. All right, branch A is what? I've got current flowing along, everything's fine, and then it branches to the two resistors, and then it comes back. Okay, so what we had going on here is we had R, and it's really essentially this. So there's 2R and 2R. That's a more Cartesian way to draw it, okay? Where the branch I circled is basically just this. There's A again. So you want to figure out what is the resistance of this branch, and A is a very unfortunate choice of letter because I already used big A for something. So we're gonna figure out what is the resistance of this branch, little a, and then just realize it's in series with R, okay? So what is the resistance of the branch A? Um, well, it's two resistors in parallel, so we know it's one over two R plus one over two R to the minus one. That is two over two R. Okay, one plus one is two, common denominator, two R, two over two R is one over R. Flip it over, it's just R. So the resistance of that branch is just R, which matches what we said in other problems. If you have a resistance of two R, whenever you add something in parallel, it always brings down the total resistance. So our, it dropped it from two R down to R. So you say, okay, this whole thing is just an R and it's in a series with that R. So we could then say, well, then what does branch B look like? Oh, okay. Let's look at B. So B, we were coming along and we have an R. All right, so there's R. Coming along, there's an R. And we to figure out what does this branch look like? Um, okay, well, on the top, we have R. Okay, so it's going to branch into two things. I'm screwing up my drawing here. Uh, let's see, so we have branches. And what do we have here? We have R, and then what did this turn into? R. So we have R plus R in series. Do, 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 do. So that would, one side would come down to R, and that's really RA, which is equal to R. All right, that's that side. And what is this side? 2R. Ah, uh, aha, 2R. So what does that look like? Well, that is 2R and R plus R is 2R in parallel. And what is 2R and 2R in parallel? I feel like I just did that. When was it that I've done that recently? Oh yes, I did it right there. 2R and 2R in parallel is just R again. So this whole thing is R and what? 
r and r in series, this whole thing is just 2r all the way to here. So then you do it again. So basically every time this branch, this uh, two resistor parallel branch turns into r and you add it to this one in series and it becomes 2r. And that 2r and that 2r make r and you add it in series and it becomes 2r. And that 2r and that 2r makes r and you add it in series and then, then you're done. All right, so that's why the answer is in the end, when you finally reach the front, it's R plus R, the whole thing in series. So the answer to this question is 2R. Now, why is it called a ladder circuit? Because we use this as like a, a weed out circuit and the ladder is all the pre-mits crawling on top of each other and dragging each other down to try to get, no, that's not why it's called a ladder circuit. It's called a ladder circuit because it looks like a ladder. Why is it famous? It's famous because if you put switches in it, and off the top of my head, I forgot where you put them. I think maybe down here, or no, up here. You put switches in terminals somewhere, and basically it's a way to convert analog to digital. So you set the switches, I'm sorry, digital to analog. You set the switches according to your uh, digital signal, like 1001, 101, set the switches that way, and the current that flows through it is proportional um, uh, to the analog number the, that those binary switches uh, refer to. So it's sort of in the DAC, ADC. It's a very fundamental circuit in that electrical engineering world. But for you, if you're not into electrical engineering, it's just a good exercise in thinking about series and parallel.